Nico Spentis here, mentorsapproach.com. Thank you for another awesome email from somebody who is actually a, a newcomer to Canada for like several years now, or almost like seven. And they're just uh, going through their difficulty of uh, finding a job and working in Canada. So uh, I'm going to walk through a couple things that I would suggest uh, my background with working with a lot of people from uh, different countries that moved here. Um, when I was teaching, there was this offset on what they should do and where they should go because when you come over into Canada, one of the biggest issues that uh, people find is that their degrees don't really mean that much. And if it's not from a Canadian university or an American university, it really does not mean that much. And and one of the things that we always try to do is uh, it creates that opportunity to find similar jobs and or go back to school and do the pathway and but at the same time finding something to be able to make money and and survive in canada so they could go back to doing what they wanted to do or what they have always done back home so here's uh yeah, here we go i have been living in canada for about seven years i finished a computer science degree and struggled to find a job after university after if uh, after if i found a six-month contract they let me go as i was not able to handle some aspects of the job People were always frustrated with having to re-explain things to me. So what does that tell us? Uh, we, we jump into the next section here, and, and that's a uh, communication issue that I spot off right away. And he, sa- he or she says, my English is not that bad, but I have some issues I am aware of. So that's a red flag right there for me. And by what you've written, like some of the, the, the mistakes I've seen in your writing, uh, that might be a cause for concern. I have noticed in all the jobs I have interviewed for the so I have noticed that in all the jobs I've interviewed for that I don't get a call back after the first interview is over the if it's over the phone or a presentation. In general, most jobs lately have been more presentations and questions and answers with a test. I have enrolled to another programming designation to increase my knowledge, but I am Wondering if this is something I should continue. Will it help me find a job? When we go through a process of uh, increasing our education and increasing our knowledge, we have to look at the why. Where is it going to lead us? And what happens when you go into a bigger company and say, uh, like I used to work at Manual Life and they would have uh, a list of uh, different educational things you could take and where you could go. And when I was there, I asked them about the MBA and they would cover half of the MBA and they had a whole bunch of different things, like a lot of opportunity to grow that way. But they also had different other uh, other small courses where when you did that course or you did several of those courses, you could go into another job where the, the, the level of pay increased and the responsibilities increased. That is what happens as you progress with experience. If somebody finishes school and yeah, they have two masters, you know, that MBA and maybe a math masters and, you know, they they have um, a PhD in something or they went and did a law degree and all that, that value is not this big thing. It's more like this of where you're at because there's no experience. So you won't be able to just jump into that management position where you're, you're, you're jumping into something where you're making six figures and all that. It happens. Not always. You'll still have to backtrack. And then sometimes when you have that education, it's it's bad because they go, well, we have to pay you more because of your education for certain areas. And even if you don't want to do it, and I had that with uh, somebody that he went through it and he's like, I had to take off most of my education, not even show them so that I could get this job because they didn't want to pay me. Uh, like it was the same mentality and he actually applied to this like job he got was to the same company that had told him about the education issue and then he took it off applied six months later and got a job (laughs) without that on there stayed his year got his experience and then added one of the masters and sorry added yeah he added one of the masters to get another job and then from there he added all his education and he was still going back and doing more school because he loves school and and you know right off the bat you, you gotta wonder where, where we had you know like this is crazy but experience is worth more to some people than education in other areas education means more than experience so you gotta look at it from that perspective is it worth it right now yes my my question would be and I'd only get this if I was talking to you or you know like 
I need to know where you're at with the the level and the proficiency of your communication of, in English. So when I'm looking at the certain things you said there about your English, um, how much of a negative factor does that contribute? When you're saying you're having problems communicating, you know it's a problem. Well, what's causing you to not function cohesively and, and growth wise so you can be able to execute different things and not have those issues. Um, when I'm looking at it, I, and I have many people that talk to me about it, I even have friends that I struggle with and I, you just want to like, you just want to like say, hey, give up, you know, and say, whatever, I'm done. Um, they go and they continue to do more and more and more schooling, but they won't fix their English communication. So then they, they, they struggle on that aspect and you hear it. You know, and, and they don't like doing presentations. They don't like being in that aspect and that environment until they find that job and then they're settled in and they know, okay, I don't need to do any presentations. I don't need to do this, this, and this, and this, and we're good. But but life is changing. Work is changing. And what we need to focus on is that growth aspect of your communication skills. And I'm not even saying specifically English. I know a lot of people say, I don't have perfect English. I can't move up. I always hear something stupid like that. It's stupid. Okay. Your English does not have to be perfect in order to move up in the company. Your communication skills, however, need to increase drastically. What does that mean? A presentation skill is something that's critical if you want to be a leader. You need to be able to do a presentation at some point with your team. You need to be able to communicate effectively with the people you're working with, either through email or conversation. So if you are having problems with that, that is where I would focus on, okay? Toasters, um, if you go and look at your local uh, groups that exist, there are many examples where you can go and learn to speak publicly. And if you go and do more of that and you focus on maybe going and taking a communications course, then you'll see that improvement happen on how to communicate effectively. And your English will improve as well. So you may be looking at it as your English isn't that bad, okay? And it may not be, okay? And, and quite frankly, I've worked with people that could not, communicate, could not speak a lot of English, but the communication skills and being able to talk to you about what is needed was phenomenal. So then you were able to work with them, no problem, and they were able to go wherever they want to go. So really focus on maybe that and focus on how do you work through getting those presentations down pat. Actually go in, you know, like there, when, I, when I taught my business courses uh, in high school, I would have a section where I would teach just presentation. Everybody was forced to do a presentation. Look at it that way. Look at what they're doing with that regard and then say to yourself, do I want to go that route and try it? And if you don't try it, you won't know. But that is, you know, the, every interview will be that way. So I haven't done interviews for a long time, but I would still do like teaching interviews here and there when I, when I did go teach. And one of the hardest things I found with teaching, uh, with interviews uh, with, in teaching, was they wanted certain specific answers with certain specific words. And Nikos doesn't remember those words, okay? Like, and at the end of the day, is that who you really want? If that's who you want, then there's a list, okay? I bring to the table a lot more things. And when I did do interviews in other jobs, I, it would be the same kind of thing. What do you want? How do you do it? Okay. And we look at different areas and I would speak with them and we would work that way. Um, I didn't have specific words and that hurt me in a lot of places uh, with teaching, especially because they wanted those, you know, what, what does the school board stand for? Well, let me tell you, I don't know the exact same words. I'm here to teach, but, you know, and, and I hear the small teachers, they want those specific answers because they're checking off. Some businesses go through the same thing. They want to hear those specific words. Like if you're a project management, they want to hear certain words. And I remember when I, when I went out to, to apply for a job in project management, I heard these words and, you know, they're like, well, what about procurement? And I was like, okay, easy enough. They wanted specifics in there. I was like, give me an example, and I would give them the example of what would have to happen, but because I didn't use the words, then that communicated that I was not doing a good job. So walk through that, look at what you're doing, how you're doing it, 
and focus on that communication side of things. Your English will improve as you go, but communication wise, you need to improve immediately. So look into a local program, look at whatever you can do, keep applying, it's a numbers game. If you're looking at it from a perspective of just finding a job, it's a numbers game. You apply to as many jobs as you can, you keep on interviewing, somebody will like you somewhere. And if your communication skills increase, you will see that success come through. If you need more specifics of where you're at, what you're doing, and you need a full dedicated hour, please uh, go on my website, mentorsapproach.com, and just click through and sign up for a one hour session, and we can go through all the details and set out a program for you to move forward. Okay, my name is Nikos Rentas. This is mentorsapproach.com. Thank you.